All right, so this is going to be kind of a catch-all video of five different techniques for modeling. Um, so the first thing is going to be a chain and how to make a chain like this. And what's really nice about this is that it's dynamic. So I can change the length, I can change the shape, and it follows and responds accordingly. Okay. And so the way that I made this, I'm going to, actually, I'll just delete everything except for the, the base unit. So this is made with uh, the geometry and then a path and an empty. And I'm going to delete the path and the empty. Okay, so I have this. This is all I modeled. And I had some modifiers that we're going to get rid of. Okay. So I just did this. I started with a torus. I extruded out. Actually, you know what? I didn't extrude. I, uh, I split. So I will delete this and start from zero. So I added a mesh torus. And in my uh, presets here, I set my major segments to eight, I believe. And my minor segments I set to six. And then I'm going to bring my minor radius up a little bit, something like that. OK, this is what I started with. I wanted the top view in wireframe, okay, Z in wireframe. And then I'm going to select all of these vertices, just half of them. And if you hit Y and then G, so Y is, uh, is split. And so by selecting all those, I split it in half, or basically separate, not separated, because separating actually separates it into two objects, but I've disconnected them, if you will. Okay, so I disconnected, and then I'm going to hit um, G to move it, and Y to keep it along the Y axis. I'm going to move it one unit that way, and I'm going to move the bottom half uh, negative one unit. And I do that just to keep the origin centered. Okay. So I split it and I moved each half one unit away. And then I'm going to select, I'll do this in solid view so you can see. So Z, solid. I'm going to select both of these edge loops. Right click and bridge edge loops. And do the same thing over here. So alt left click on that edge loop. Shift alt left click on that edge loop to select them both. And then right click bridge edge loops. Okay, so there's my chain link. And I'm going to name this chain link. Okay, get in that habit. So there's our chain link. Now what we want to do is duplicate it down the line. A modifier. And we, we don't want it to go in the x direction. We want to go in, in the y direction. So we're going to set the x to 0 for relative. And the y, if we set it to 1, well, then they're not interlinked. Then it's not a chain. It's just a bunch of loops of, off, of metal. Uh, so we want to bring that down. It's probably easier to do this in top view, so 7 on the number pad. And I'm going to click and drag on the Y value and hold down Shift so I get really detailed control. I'm going to go to about there. Okay, So really close. Close enough. At 0.63 in my case. Your mileage may vary as far as that number is concerned. Um, and we can adjust the count. But we don't have a whole lot of like flexibility and control over this like we did in my example. Uh, and to do that, what we need to do is change this from fit type fixed count to fit curve. If we set it to fit curve, you can see that now this is asking. It's got this curve field, which means it's looking for a curve to fit it to. And we haven't added that curve yet, so that's the next thing. So I'm going to hit uh, Tab to go into Object Mode, and then Shift A, and I'm going to add a curve path. Okay. When I add that, and I'm going to hit Tab to go into Edit Mode there, and you can see that we have this path. And you can see the path has all these arrows along it, telling us telling us which direction that path is moving. So I'm going to rotate it around the z-axis, 90 degrees, R Z 90. Okay. And then I'm just going to move it 
in the y direction. Now this path has five control points on it. Okay. And you can move and rotate in the scale these just like you can vertices. And the path will kind of will be dynamically drawn between these points. Uh, so what I did is I just, I'm going to top view for this for now, just spread them out. And I'll just spread them out in a straight line for now. Doesn't have to be exact. Doesn't really matter. Okay, so now I have all these points spread out. And I'm going to name this path. We're going to call it uh, chain path. Simple, descriptive. Okay, so once that's there, now I can select my chain link, and in my array modifier, now I can set that, if I click on the curve field, you can see chain path is there, and I can choose that, and it automatically duplicates the link, the number of times it takes to fit that path. Okay, so if I select my path again, hit tab to go into edit mode, now I can grab any of these points and move it, and it will fit that length. Now, there's one other problem, and that's the chains don't follow the path. It's, it's matching the length, but it's not actually following the curve. So we need to fix that, and then we also need to make these chains rotate so that they interlink and not intersect. So let's, let's fix that rotation first, because that's a pretty easy one to do. We select our chain links again and look at our array. We do have this object offset, and so we're going to actually use both the relative offset and the object offset to make this work. So the reason why I kept my origin for this initial chain link in the center there, I guess it doesn't really matter, but it just makes things easier. Um, I'm going to add in an empty, so add, shift A, add empty plane axis. I'm going to name this. We're going to call it chain uh, rotate empty. And we want each link to rotate 90 degrees on down the line. So I'm going to select this empty, hit R, Y to rotate around the Y axis, and then type in 90. Okay, and hit return. So I've rotated it 90 degrees. Now I'm going back to my original chain link turn on object offset and set that to my chain rotate empty and there we go now each subsequent link is rotated 90 degrees and we have a chain okay last thing we need to do is get this chain to follow the curve and for that actually before I do that let's grab our chain path and let's give it a curve so that we when we do this we can see the results so I'm just going to grab some points and move them in weird directions. Okay, that works. Okay. So now we'll select our chain. We need it to follow the curve, and for that we're going to use a curve modifier. Okay, it's right here. And uh, we're going to set the object to our chain path. And it's not quite there yet. Something happened, but not what we want. Now we need to set our deformation axis. So that's the which direction of the object is it going to follow. We set it to Y, so going in the Y direction, now it's following the curve. And we can still, because we're using modifiers, we can still go back in and do whatever we need to. If we needed to wrap this chain around something, uh, we can extrude new points out of the chain just by hitting E. And now that chain continues to follow. It's a super powerful way uh, to get a very good looking chain with very little effort.